Now that we've mounted the case on the articulator, the next thing that we need to do is to separate the, the mounting or the recording media. Just take a, a knife and put it between the incisal edges and pry it apart. And as you can see, we have lots of junk of the recording media and sticky wax that are on the occlusal surfaces. So what we want to do before we start trying to arrange teeth is to clean all of this stuff up. So we're going to remove all of the, the recording medium or the compound that we use for recording medium and the sticky wax and just clean the occlusion rims up in order to get it ready for arrangement of teeth. So we're just going to remove them and over a trash can, scrape all of that excess sticky wax plaster bits, recording medium, anything that might be extraneous material from your base plate and occlusion rim. Clean it up very well. And if you remove a little bit too much wax, don't be too concerned about it because we're going to add that back and rebuild the occlusion rims here in just a moment as soon as we get everything all cleaned up. Remove the mandibular one and do the same thing, just clean it up. Okay, now we have all that extraneous material off of it. As you can see, when we place it back on the articulator, those rims are not in occlusion. They're open by about two or three millimeters in the anterior, and you may remember at jaw relation time, we decided that uh, after we thought we had established the vertical dimension of occlusion, that in securing a record that we wanted to open it about two to three millimeters, because in securing that vertical dimension of occlusion, we had overcut the wax just slightly. So at this point, we can build it back to compensate for that. The first step in compensating for that will be to take some wax and to rebuild the occlusal surface of the maxillary rim. In order to rebuild the, rebuild the occlusion rim, I usually take some wax in a cup and just melt the wax, and we're gonna flow some molten wax into the keyways to smooth out the occlusal surface once again. And we're going to flow wax now into those keyways just to rebuild the occlusal surface in the same manner that we originally intended for it. building them back up to their original position. We let that wax cool for just a little bit now, just till it solidifies. And then we're going to take our hot plate, just like we did originally, and smooth off that occlusal surface. Try not to appreciably change the occlusal plane from where you originally set that occlusal plane up in the patient's mouth. And as you can see, we filled in the keyways. And I'm just going to smooth out a couple of these areas where we have a little flowed wax. Just make it nice and smooth. Now that we've reestablished the occlusal plane on the maxillary, as we can see, we have the occlusal plane, but we still do not have occlusal contact. What we want to do with that is to take a piece of base plate wax and we're going to make a little roll of base plate wax, oh maybe the size of a pencil, and we're going to apply that to the occlusal surface of the mandibular and close the maxillary into it in order to reestablish the contact on the articulator. of the occlusal rim of the maxillary with the occlusal rim of the mandibular. Probably my guesstimate is half a piece of wax, a sheet of wax on that will be sufficient. It's probably even too much, but let's see. So we fold it over. We're just gonna make a little roll about the size of a pencil of base plate wax. Now that we 
we have that roll, we're going to heat that in the flame, build it up on the occlusal surface of the mandibular, That while that wax is nice and soft, close the maxillary into it and mash it into it until the incisal pin comes back into contact. We'll let that set for just a few seconds now to allow that wax to solidify just a little bit more. And then we can pry it apart and usually it'll t it won't tend to stick real well to the lower, but this one did, it stuck pretty good. And as you can see, we know where the occlusal surface is now. And now we can take a knife, and with a knife, we can cut the excess wax off. So we just remove the excess wax now. And now we can take a spatula, a hot spatula, and smooth that wax and get it back to a normal form. So all we're doing is smoothing it out now and to get it back to its original form at the corrected vertical dimension of occlusion. Now we can place it back on the articulator and see if we've reestablished our occlusal contact, which we have. As you can see, we have nice occlusal contact of the rims all the way around. We're ready to start arranging the 12 anterior teeth. Those teeth come to us from the manufacturer in cards of six teeth. This particular card, if you may remember, we had selected in our tooth selection process at the last appointment, we had selected BioBlend Mold 22E, which we find right here on the card. The mold number is 22E, and we selected shade 109, and we find that here on the card. You'll notice that these teeth are arranged in sort of a peculiar manner from the manufacturer, and that has to do with the manufacturing process more than the convenience of the technician or the dentist who's arranging teeth, and that the two centrals are in the middle where you would expect them to be, a right central and a left central. Both laterals are over on the right side, a right lateral, a left lateral, and the two canines are on the other side, right canine and a left canine. And the mandibular teeth, if you'll remember, we selected from our uh, descriptive chart that we had of, uh, uh, of the denture teeth, and that was in that last column when we, uh, anal when we looked in, on the descriptive card, the specifications of the teeth, and it told us what uh, mold of mandibular anterior teeth occluded properly with the maxillary mold that we, uh, that we had selected. And it, turns out that the mandibular mold that is needed to go with the 22E is mold H, and of course the same shade. So we have mold H and shade 109. You may remember from the patient, we found a midline, and we marked that in the patient's mouth where we thought the midline should be. We marked that by putting a mark onto the occlusion rim. You can verify that mark somewhat at this point by looking at the cast and determining the midline of the cast and seeing if that midline turns out to be directly on that midline mark that we had established, and it does. So we can assume that that midline is correct. You may also remember in establishing the contour of the maxillary lip on our patient, we determined we would like to bring the teeth slightly farther forward than what our wax rim had, uh, where we had built our wax rim. So rather than place these teeth uh, directly, uh, the facial surface of the teeth directly at the surface of this wax, we want to bring them farther forward by just a millimeter or so. In starting to arrange the teeth, what I like to do is to cut a small wedge of wax where the first tooth is going to be 
uh, going to be set into the wax. And this, since this was our midline, I'm going to cut, be setting the, arranging the left central incisor. So I'm going to remove a little bit of wax from that area. And now with it on the articulator, we're going to pull the wax in that area with a good hot spatula. I like to use this number 31 spatula, nice large spatula, because that allows us to melt wax down uh, in a pretty good manner and a pretty good sized area without having to play around with it too much. So you want to get a pool of wax where that right central or left central incisor would be. Get the left central incisor off of the card and then we're going to place that tooth into that pool of wax at the incisal length that we established, which is the incisal length now that we established it from the patient's mouth as being here. And we want that tooth to be slightly forward now of where the original contour was. As you can see, we've placed it about, oh, maybe two millimeters forward of the original contour, as you can see here. We have to look at the angulation of that tooth now, and that will be difficult to see because of the incisal pin, but perhaps we can see it like this, in that that tooth should have a very slight mesial inclination. From the vertical, which would be here, like this, it should have a slight mesial inclination. And that tooth seems to be doing that with a slight mesial inclination. You'll note with this particular tar carving of tooth, that with a slight mesial inclination of it, the incisal edge of that central incisor is virtually flat. It, goes, it follows the contour that we've established for a lip uh, length and an incisal plane, and it follows that contour quite nicely. It has a very slight mesial inclination to it. Once you have placed the tooth where you think it, think it belongs, again, take the warm spatula, and we're going to Secure that tooth by melting the wax around it just a little bit so that that wax sticks very well to the tooth and it's secured in place. And do that both buccal and lingually. And now we have one tooth arranged, which is slightly anterior to where we decided that uh, uh, the original contour dictated. We've got it slightly anterior to that, but we have the correct dimensions of it. One other thing that you might want to look at in arranging these teeth is we have the angulation of the tooth and we have the correct position, what we anticipate to be the correct position, anterior posteriorly. You should turn it over and project a root from that tooth so that you can see the facial surface. And if you project a root onto that tooth, that root should come right out of the ridge. Remember, when we go back to the basics of how teeth should be arranged, that from the periphery to the incisal edge, at that plane, the part of that tooth should touch that plane is the middle third of the tooth, which that one does quite nicely, is the middle third of the central incisor should touch that plane as a straight line from the edge of the periphery, the outer edge of the periphery, to the incisal edge, and the middle third of the tooth would be the most prominent part of the tooth. Now we're ready to go on and arrange the second tooth in the arch, and that would be the right central incisor. And again, we'll cut a little wedge of wax where that tooth is to, is to go. And we're going to pull that wax with a hot spatula. And we pull the wax, get a nice little pool of molten wax where we want the next tooth to be arranged. and place this tooth to make it identical in position to the, to the left central incisor which we placed before. So basically we're just going to duplicate this by placing it into the wax, not quite in position, I need, didn't get the wax quite cool enough, or 
soft enough. So I need to pull it just a little bit more. And now we're going to place that tooth. Incisal plant pen always gets in your way at this point of placing the central incisors. But please do not remove the incisal pen. Leave it alone because it's important that you maintain your vertical with that incisal pen. And now we have the second tooth arranged and let's see what we have now. We look at it from here, that tooth will have the incisal edge, will be a mirror image of the incisal edge that we had of the left central incisor, which it seems to do quite well. It will have a very slight mesial inclination, which it seems to have. And looking at it from a profile, we'll see that it, it is virtually identical to the right central incisor. And if we remove that base plate from the rim now, and again, project a root onto that tooth, we'll see that the root of that tooth would come right out of the ridge. And that's a must that those teeth simulate exactly where those, uh, uh, the roots of the teeth would have been if they were natural teeth, that they come directly out of the ridge. We might also want to look at one other factor at this point, and that is to point out the incisive papilla from the inside now. And we see that that incisive papilla, that if this were a natural arch of teeth, that incisive papilla would be lingual to and between the singular of the two central incisors, meaning right there. And if we look at it from here, that's where it is. So that means that we're in pretty good position as to where those teeth belong. We place it back onto the master cast, and now we're ready to arrange a lateral incisor. We'll go over to the left side, cut a wedge of wax out in the area where we want that lateral to go, and again, pull the wax. Nice little pool of molten wax. And we want to remember that this tooth is the most angular of all the teeth, meaning that it will have more mesial inclination and be a little bit more prominent at the incisal edge than were the central incisors. And it'll have a little more, a little more mesial inclination to it. And if we look at it from here, we'll see that this lateral now has more me mesial inclination than does the central. The incisal edge of the lateral will be just slightly raised from that of the central, maybe a half a millimeter. And once we have that in position, we would like to open it up and look at the arch form now and see that as we come around from central and central around the lateral, it begins to form a curve or an arch form. And we can see that arch form developing, of it starting out on a curve. Now we want to secure that tooth in place, again with a hot spatula melting the wax around it, and secure it in place so that it doesn't move on us as we go through arranging the remainder of the teeth. Carve the excess wax back away from the lingual so it doesn't get in your way. It just helps with aesthetics and helps keep it out of your way so that wax doesn't become a detriment to you. So we have three teeth arranged now, two centrals and a lateral. And if we take this maxillary off again and look at it from the, from the underneath side, if we project a root onto that lateral incisor, it should come right out of the ridge. Let's see if I can simulate that this way. It should come right out of the ridge. Now we're ready to move on. We'll go to the right side now and remove a wedge of wax for the right lateral incisor. And again, pull the wax.
And we get the right lateral incisor and arrange it to a mirror image of what we did with the left lateral incisor. Slight bit more mesial contact, uh, mesial inclination to it, a little bit more incisal prominence to it than is the central incisor. And if we look at it from the facial, we'll see that if we look at the long axis of teeth and we look at a central incisor and the long axis of a central and we come around to the lateral, it will have more of a mesial inclination than did the central incisor. Now we're ready to secure that lateral in place by put, melting the wax around the tooth on the facial and again Sear it in from the lingual and remove some of the, that wax from the lingual if you wish at this point. Now we're ready to arrange what in my opinion is the hardest tooth in the maxillary arch to arrange and that is the canine. The canines are very difficult to arrange and to get them to look right and the reason why is they must turn the corner they're the cornerstone of this anterior arrangement. So what we're going to do is we're going to, again, pull the wax just as we did for the other teeth. And we have to arrange this canine in such a way that it turns the corner. Some of the things that we want to keep in mind with it is that when we view this from the mesial, the canine, the most prominent part of that canine will be the gingival third. So we're going to rem we're going to arrange the maxillary left canine and the gingival third of that tooth at this point will need to be the most prominent part of the tooth. Smooth a little wax around it and let's see what it looks like here. Yes, as you can see, when we view this from the mesial now, that the most prominent part of this canine is the gingival third of the tooth. On the lateral incisor, it was down in the incisal third of the tooth. And on the central incisor, it was in the middle third of the tooth. And now we've turned this in such a way now that the most prominent part of, the, of that canine is the gingival third of that tooth. Right here is the most prominent part. Now, we also need to look at arch form. And in looking at it, the arch form, we want to realize that we have started our arch form with the incisors. And then we got to the canine. This canine has a two surface incisal edge. It has an incisal edge. It's veed, in other words. The, the mesial part of it is going to follow your arch form around, and the distal part will point down through the line of where the posterior teeth are going to go. When you view this tooth from the mesial, strictly from the mesial, in this way, straight from the mesial, the only part of that tooth that you should be able to see is the mesial half of the tooth. The distal half of the tooth is hidden behind the bulge of the tooth. So when you view it from straight on, the mesial half of the facial surface is the only part of that tooth that you should see. Looks like we're coming pretty good with it. This is going about the direction that I would anticipate it should go. So now we're going to ar arrange the maxillary left canine, or right canine, I'm sorry. Again, a wedge of wax. We're going to pull the wax in that area. And then arrange this canine so that the gingival portion of the tooth is the most prominent.
When we view that tooth from the facial, straight from the facial, it should not have as much mesial inclination as does the lateral. The lateral has a lot of mesial inclination. It'll straighten back up a little bit from the lateral. It won't be quite as mesially inclined as is the lateral. And we look at it now from the facial. And what we should see when we look at it from the facial is the most prominent part of the tooth should be the gingival third of the tooth, which we have here, the gingival third of the tooth. We look at it from the incisal viewpoint, we'll see that we have an arch form now that is started around there and that the canine turns the corner and the distal part of that canine is pointing back through where the occlusal plane of the posterior teeth would be. So as we can see, we have a nice arch form to this now. And we have what might be a nice arrangement to start to try into the patient's mouth as a starter for establishing aesthetics. Now I want to finish stabilizing those teeth into the maxillary and we'll carve a little bit of wax away from the lingual before we arrange the mandibular posterior or mandibular anterior teeth. So we're just stabilizing it at this point. And we can take away any of the excess wax that might be there. This will help us when we start arranging the mandibular anterior teeth because that wax won't be in our way of any vertical overlap that we might like to place into them. Basically, we've just removed enough wax to get it out of our way. And we can smooth that out with a warm spatula. And basically, we have a nice arrangement of those teeth at this point. Now that we've arranged the maxillary anterior teeth, we want to mark a midline on the mandibular. Just make that coincide to the same midline we had on the maxillary and mark it. And once we have that marked, we're ready to arrange teeth. Now, as you can see, where we arrange the maxillary anterior teeth and the position of the mandibular rim as it is at this point, we have quite a bit of horizontal overlap. But if we examine the position of the labial periphery, as we have it here, examine that position, we know that we can bring the facial surfaces of the mandibular anterior teeth out as far as the labial periphery, which means that we can have less horizontal overlap into the arrangement than what these, this rim shows us at this point. So I don't need to remove much wax along here in order to be able to get those teeth into a good position for us. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull the wax now where the mandibular central and left central incisor will go. And let's arrange that tooth without removing a wedge of wax because it's going to end up anterior to where that is, where that uh, contour of that rim is. So we might as well not remove any wax. So we'll just have to place it back if we did. So let's pull the wax in that area. Maxillary keeps falling down a little bit on me. And now we're going to take a mandibular left central incisor and we're going to place that into the wax on the mandible so that the facial surface is no farther out than the periphery. It's just slightly further out right now than it should be. And there it is just about even with the periphery where it is right now. I don't know about vertical height yet, but let's see. Right now we have a vertical overlap of that tooth. It looks like probably two to three millimeters and it's probably too much, but let's see. Let's put it into incisal, a straight protrusive registration and see if it interferes. And no, it doesn't. So it can get away with that much incisal guidance, that much vertical overlap 
because of the amount of horizontal overlap. So that position of that central as far as its vertical height is fine. Now let's look at the angulation of the central. First of all, when you look at it from the labial, we see that that facial surface is at about the same position as is the facial surface of the periphery. We look at the mesial inclination of that tooth and it will have a very, very slight mesial inclination to the tooth. It should be almost vertical. And we see that that's what we have. Vertical would be about like this and that's about what we have of that central incisor. Virtually vertical with just a very slight mesial inclination. Now let's pull wax for the right central incisor. Nice little pool of molten wax and we place the right central incisor now. And we want to position it with it so that the incisal height is virtually the same as the left central incisor which we just arranged. Wax is not quite soft enough and I'm having problems positioning it, so let's soften the wax a little more. One thing I do like to do when I'm arranging mandibular anterior teeth is I make, like to make them a little bit on the crooked side. If you notice most patients, even after ortho, with natural teeth, most patients have some uh, malalignment of the mandibular anterior teeth. And so, in order to enhance aesthetics, it's quite good quite often to just give them a little bit of a crooked look on the lower. As this is right now, we have a, a mesial inclination that's virtually the same as the mesial inclination we have of the left central incisor. So the inclination of them from a mesial distal standpoint is about right. We look at it from the facial and we see that that is just about at the correct uh, buccal lingual position that the facial surface is just about even with the outer limits of the periphery of, uh, in the labial region. So we're going to stabilize those teeth in place now. We'll move around the arch from there and arrange some lateral incisors. Now with the mandibular anterior teeth, you might remember that the most vertical of the anterior teeth is the central incisor. The lateral incisor is not quite as vertical. It has a little bit more mesial inclination to it. And the canine is the tooth that is most angled in that the mesial inclination is more on the canine than it is on the lateral or the central incisor. So let's pull some wax. The mandibular left lateral incisor now. And we're going to continue the arch form. We know about where the vertical height should be. And we continue the arch form and at this point we'll see that that inclination of that lateral incisor now is more than the central incisor. And we're going to continue around the arch in that manner. Now let's check the, the ver vertical overlap and the incisal guidance by placing it into occlusion and moving it into straight protrusive and we see it just barely brushes by with a little contact. We move it into lateral direction and it does miss just slightly. So we're fine as far as the incisal guidance is concerned. Now we can stabilize that tooth. wax for the mandibular right lateral incisor. I feel like in a way that this particular arrangement is too easy. 
in that I've not had to grind base plate. I have no problem at all with having enough space to arrange teeth. In arranging teeth, one of the biggest problems we have sometimes is space, and this one does not exhibit the problems that you have with space. So let's check the vertical overlap now. It's fine. Just barely getting a little brushing contact to the lateral incisor if we go into lateral with it. The inclination of the teeth, if we look, we see that the lateral incisor is more inclined than is the central incisor. Let's look at arch form. Clean it up. And let's look at the arch form. And again, looking at the teeth from here and projecting roots on them, we'd see that they can't, would come out of the ridge. And now we're ready to arrange the canines. And again, we're going to pull the wax where that canine belongs. Mandibular left canine, and it's going to have more mesial inclination than did the lateral incisor, and it will begin to turn the arch somewhat. Usually mandibular canines do not turn the arch quite as well as do maxillary canines. But again, as in the maxillary canine, the most prominent part of that tooth when you view it will be the gingival third of the tooth. As we can see there, the gingival third is most prominent. Let's check the vertical height of it by placing it in centric relation, and let's move it into left working. We see it barely misses that canine, which is just what we're after. If we put, move it into straight protrusive, we see that it misses the mandibular, the mandibular canine misses the lateral just slightly. Now we're ready to pull the wax on the right side. and arrange the mandibular right canine, which is the 12th tooth now that we're arranging of the, of the anterior teeth. And again, it has a mesial inclination to it, has more mesial inclination than does the lateral. And the lateral has more mesial inclination than does the central. And if we look at the vertical overlap of them and put this into a straight lateral, we'll see that it just barely misses canine tip to canine tip. And if we take it into protrusive, we'll see that it does miss. We don't have any interferences with it. And now we're ready to arrange the canines. And again, we're going to pull the wax where that canine belongs. Mandibular left canine, and it's going to have more mesial inclination than did the lateral incisor, and it will begin to turn the arch somewhat. Usually mandibular canines do not turn the arch quite as well as do maxillary canines. But again, as in the maxillary canine, the most prominent part of that tooth when you view it will be the gingival third of the tooth. As we can see there, the gingival third is most prominent. Let's check the vertical height of it by placing it in centric relation, and let's move it into left working. We see it barely misses that canine, which is just what we're after. If we put, move it into straight protrusive, we see that it misses the mandibular, the mandibular canine misses the lateral just slightly. Now we're ready to pull the wax on the right side. and arrange the mandibular right canine, which is the 12th tooth now that we're arranging of the, of the anterior teeth. And again, it has a mesial inclination to it, has more mesial inclination than does the lateral. And the lateral has more mesial inclination than does the central. And if we look 
at the vertical overlap of them and put this into a straight lateral, we'll see that it just barely misses canine tip to canine tip. And if we take it into protrusive, we'll see that it does miss. We don't have any interferences with it. And now we can cut away all of this excess wax that is lingual to the canines now. Just cut it away, get it out of her way. It's doing us no good and it will aid. And when we start to try this end of the patient's mouth, it'll give them more room for their tongue and it'll be a closer representation of what our finished denture should look like. So you just get rid of the excess wax. One other thing that I like to do in arranging these teeth and getting them ready to try them into the patient's mouth is to semi festoon or carve the wax in such a way that it is very nice and smooth and presentable when we present this to the patient for an evaluation of the aesthetics. It's pretty hard to evaluate aesthetics if what you try in their mouth is ugly because you have failed to carve the wax very well. So what we're going to do is we're going to get a supply of molten wax into a metal cup just by heating some base plate wax into the metal cup and get a supply of molten wax and we're going to flow enough wax around all of those teeth to be able to carve and smooth the wax in such a way as to simulate the gingiva. We don't need to go into detail with it with the carving of this wax at this point, the detail that you would in a finished festooning, but you need to have it nice and smooth and the wax carved to the proper height so that you expose the proper amount of tooth on each of the dentures. And then that gives your patient, you and your patient, a better idea of what the teeth are going to look like and how to evaluate them. And what I like to do with it is just flow wax over the collars of the teeth. And we're going to flow enough wax just to simulate what the gingiva might look like in the finished product. As I said before, this does not have to be to the same degree of finishing that you would if this were the finished product, but it has to simulate what the gingiva might look like. So it does flow enough wax to get it to that point. Let that wax solidify take a hot spatula and smooth that out nice and smooth. Now we can set this one aside and let that wax solidify enough that we can carve on it and while we're doing that we can add some wax to the mandibular. Just don't allow that wax to flow up onto the inside of your base plate. And then let's melt the wax into the lingual and smooth that. And as I said before, it's not important that this wax be to exact contour. It just has to be presentable at this point. Now we can set this aside and by this time the wax on the maxillary should be cooled enough that we can carve the wax. And what you want to do is you want to expose the clinical crown of each tooth by feeling for the junction of the clinical crown of the tooth and the collar. And we do not want to expose the collar but do we do want to expose all of the clinical crown of each tooth. 
and we would like to simulate somewhat what the gingival papilla should look like, the interdental papilla, but that doesn't have to be exact. And we can carve all that wax now above her cut, carve that off and clean it off of the teeth so that the teeth are nice and clean. And we can clean the linguals of them somewhat by getting rid of any excess wax and just to clean them up somewhat. Once you've cleaned the excess wax off, at this point we can take our hand out torch or alcohol torch and make sure that we get a nice little flame on it and that our pump is working properly so that we have a nice pinpoint flame and just flame it enough to smooth the wax so that it's nice and smooth. And we can set that aside now. Now we're going to carve the mandibular in the same way, just by carving it down to the junction of the collar of the tooth and the clinical crown of the tooth. And then we're going to remove all the wax that's covering the clinical crown of each tooth. And just, re just clean it up now by removing all the wax above the cut mark. On the lingual again, just clean them, getting rid of any excess wax. We're ready to flame that again with our hand out torch just to smooth the wax up, just enough to smooth it. Now let's see back on the maxillary now. And now we have an anterior arrangement of teeth. And what you want to note with this is that the anterior arrangement of teeth is where we approximated or where we guesstimated when we established jaw relations and so on, where we guesstimated that we thought the teeth might belong. And we've arranged them in what our first guess is into a nice aesthetic arrangement of teeth. We've built the posterior rims until they're into total and complete contact in that we do not have any spaces between the upper and lower rims and that at this vertical dimension and this centric relation that we have recorded and the mounting that we have on the articulator, the rims are in perfect contact. Only then, when those rims are in perfect contact and you've done your best with an aesthetic arrangement of the teeth, are you ready to try them in the patient's mouth. 